Hello everyone. So in our previous videos, we started our discussions in mathematical physics where we discussed there some integral equations, particularly the Friedham integral and Volterra integral equations. We will still continue that one no? in our next series of discussions or in our next sessions. We also discussed some problems in vector calculus where we considered the divergence of the column force and gravitational forces. We also considered some, some problems involving the position vectors, no? where we get the gradient or the divergence of our position vector and so on. Now, today I decided to start our series of discussions about group theory, which as we know is, is a very important theory no? in, or is a very important uh, discussion, not only in mathematics, but also in physics and engineering particularly quantum mechanical systems and classical systems. So this is actually just the part one of this series of discussions. Particularly, we will, st uh, we will be discussing the definitions no, or some of the overviews about group theory. So let me just change my pointers to, uh, okay, so we have this one. Okay, now, uh, when we are talking about group theory, it's actually a mathematical framework for describing symmetries of classical and quantum mechanical systems. And as we know, symmetries, okay, our, our many physical systems possess symmetries. We have, uh, for example, we have the Lorentz transformation, we have the quantum chromodynamics, and so on. And the good thing about symmetry is, is that it leads to some conservation loss, which makes our problem easier to solve. And basically, you know, uh, the, the mathematics becomes uh, lessened. The hustling is not that, um, not that long, and the solutions is really very straightforward. So these are the examples. Now, uh, we have to note that in quantum mechanics, symmetries manifest themselves as unitary operators which commute with the system. Uh, I believe that we are all familiar with this uh, unita unitary operators, no? or uh, we have in the form of matrix, we have the unitary matrices. Now also, uh, a group theory is a set of objects, or a set of objects or elements, like symmetry operations, called the elements of G. No? So here we denoted our group as G. So of course, the elements of the group. Okay, uh, th there are elements of the group. See, for example, if we have groupings here, we have group one, we have group two, and we have group three. So basically, there are members in a, in a particular group. And those members in group theory are what we call as the elements of the group. That may be combined to form a well-defined product in the group that satisfies the following conditions or, or properties. And we have really have to consider these properties for us to really be able to, to, to say that this quantity or that this uh, this thing is a group. So these are the properties of the group. The first one is the so-called closure property, where basically uh, if A and B are elements of the group, no, or uh, as what we said earlier, uh, we, we could just imagine this one as like the members of the group. No? So we have group one, so if A and B are the members of the group, then the product of A and B of course, is an element of the group, or the combination or of, of A and B is, of course, an element of the group. We also have this associativity. If uh, for all A, B, C element of the group, okay, we have A times B, C is equal to A, B times C, which means that for this associative property, we can actually regroup this one. It's either we multiply B, C first before multiplying it to A, or we multiply a b first before uh, multiplying it to c and that's what we call as associative property and we also have here the identity element no? um, for some mu or there exists a mu an element of g okay where a the element uh, of the group a multiplied by our identity element is of, of course this is always equal to a and the reason for this is because as we know the identity element has a magnitude one no? And this is actually a, a, spe a special element or a special operator when we are talking about operators because it has the identity one. 
In, in matrices, it's uh, like a diagonal matrix no? with diagonal elements equal to 1. And this is true for all E elements or element of the G or of the group. We also have here the inverse element. There exists an inverse of A, an element of the group, such that the multiplication of A and its inverse is actually just equal to the identity element. And the reason is because, as what I've said earlier, the identity element actually has a magnitude of 1, or its value is actually equal to 1. And this is true for all A that is an element of the group. Now, if the order of operations between elements, no, for example, we have a certain group, and we have, of course, we, we can just imagine the members of the group, no, or the elements of the group. Now, if we can interchange the order of these elements, the order of operations, or we say that they are commutative, the group is called an abelian group. For example, uh, if we have these operations, we have GA times GB. So if we can interchange the order of this operation, or uh, we, we write first GB before writing GA, uh, in such a way that we write it mathematically like this, for all B, or for all AB element of the group, we can say that we have an abelian group. And we just have to actually remember this terminologies now. Uh, okay. Now, this is an example of the group. No? Suppo suppose we consider a, a counterclockwise coordinate rotation in two dimensions. So, uh, we can just imagine, no? in, in the perspective of three-dimensional space or coordinate system, suppose we have, okay, uh, suppose we have here the, what is this? In three dimensions, suppose we have, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. So uh, if we consider, for example, a counterclockwise rotation with respect to the z-axis, or if we rotate no, this, uh, if we rotate the x-y plane, so uh, we, of course, we expect that this is um, a function no, of, of psi, where psi is, of course, the rotational uh, angle, no, rotation angle, such as this, this one, for example, this is psi. So, uh, of course, um, we have here a vector, no, which we call as x prime ket, which is equal to this column matrix. And this is equal to the rotation vector, or the rotation matrix. No, This is the rotation operator. Rotation operator. Or in the matrix form, this is the rotation matrix. Multiplied to the original coordinates x and y. So this is equal to cosine of psi sine of psi, and we have negative sine of psi, we have cosine of psi, times, of course, times the xy. Now, through an angle psi in the uh, uh, xy coordinate system, no, to a new orientation. And accordingly, if we have two rotation operators, no, because basically this is just our, our psi, so if we, considered, uh, if we consider two rotations, no, which we call as our psi 1, and we have our psi 2, so if we multiply this one, of course, uh, obviously, this is still an element of our group. No? So uh, here, anyway, we know that our psi 1 or our psi is equal to uh, this one, no? which is a rotation matrix. So we just have to actually copy this one. So we have cosine of psi 1, sine psi 1, or minus sine of psi 1, cosine of psi 1. And of course, uh, multiplied to uh, r as a function of psi 2. So we have cosine psi 2, sine psi 2, negative sine psi 2, we have cosine psi 2. Uh, and if we have another uh, rotation matrix, say we have psi, uh, our psi 3, so we just have to put it here. No? So obviously after performing this one, this is matrix multiplication. So we have this cosine of psi 1 plus psi 2, we have sine psi 1 plus psi 2, we have negative sine psi 1 plus psi 2, and we have cosine sine 1 plus uh, psi 1 plus psi 2. Okay, so uh, this is, or that is an uh, example of, um, of a group. So this is just the definition, no? or uh, what is this? These are just the basics of the group theory. So next time, uh, we will be discussing no, very shortly about a homomorphism, isomorphism, and matrix, matrix representations of, uh, of, of the group. Okay, so if you have questions or clarifications, you can just type your questions in the comment section. Thank you very much.